Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Cadence with CT Cow. is going to talk today about thermal challenges in advanced packaging. So CT, as we get into advanced packaging, everybody always thought initially that it would be very simple to have, you wouldn't have to worry about the heat because you'd have multiple chips and you can move things off die onto a separate chip and just connect them together. That's not the case though, right? Yeah, yeah. Right now the, the package is getting more complicated. And traditionally, we start from steady state thermal trend, uh, analysis, and the granularity right now is going way up to to beyond our imagination. So um, that would be a uh, challenge to us. Then we need to not only on uh, not only focus on steady state thermal analysis, also go to transient, which means the temperature and the power are uh, varying with varying with time. And also vary by use case too, right? So your use case in a car perhaps might be different in one country than it would be in another. Right. So, so user or designer has different power scheme put into the package. Uh, not just car, like any uh, electronic gadget like uh, your smartphone, your um, any electronic design right now, they are really playing with uh, how to boost up the performance by dump up but dump, dump in a lot of power into the device, um, but they want to control the on-off time. So not everything is becomes a, a transient consideration right now. Why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. sure. So CT, what are we looking at here? Yeah, uh, on this, on the left, and I was pointing here, there's a traditional package. You have a die package, you have a molding compound sitting on the PCB. Traditionally, it, that's a simple structure of the package. Then we have the JDAX standard to analyze the thermal performance inside the die or inside the mode. It could be the theta J, A, J, B, J, C, I'm not sure. Um, the J means junction to ambient, junction to the board, junction to the case. And there are basically just uh, thermal resistors uh, characterizing this whole assembly. And thermal resistor just, just uh, stating, just indicating the th um, steady state solution of the th thermal thermal issues. Then I draw, there's a red line there. That means that uh, this is a flip chip package. So that will be a um, um, heat generating on this surface. And when there is heat generated in the package, even on a die, it doesn't always show up exactly where you think it's going to show up too, right? So now you have to track where that heat is going to be as it's being used. Yeah, inside the die, actually we know, it's it maybe millions of transistors and they are different uh, IP block dissipating heat. So it could be a different um, regions to generate heat. So that's why the challenge comes from. Traditionally, you may just disc discretize into maybe 10, 20 regions to, to show, um, to indicating how much power generated. Then right now, uh, I think we, we need to combine the IC design tools, like they can do um, uh, R, um, RLC extraction and the thermal power characterization within the chips and come up with a realistic power map on the chips. So that's why Cadence strain is coming in. And it gets more complicated as we get into things like um, AI chips too, right? Where you have, the idea is a lot of these things are always going to be on, but they're also connected now in a package with other chips that may not be always on. That's, that's correct. That's exactly what we are looking at. So I'm moving here to a typical a large um, assembly. There will be a 3D IC. Just sim simply put, if you have PCB, you have a package, you have multiple uh, high bandwidth memory sitting on the interposer. This green box we could usually say is a silicon interposer. You have a through silicon via. Then you have multiple dies stacking together. Here, there's uh, this one will be a traditional like a uh, flip chip, maybe sitting here. Then you may have another uh, package there using like typical info package. And in there, there's no um, package substrate. They just use uh, uh, advanced package uh, technique to put everything together. So think about it. On, on this PCB, you have uh, multiple chips um, performing multiple functions and at different times. Uh, you have a memory, you have a logic, you have a Every, all different, doing different jobs there. Like uh, we just encounter example that um, our, our customer gave us example 
then if I use that power into the package and all those conditions gave me, I'll get the silicon goes up to 2000 degrees C. And I was surprised in the beginning, but it turns out the customer doesn't want to know the steady state temperature, which will be 2000 degrees C. But he knows I need to just dump a lot of power into this package to get the performance I want. I don't care the steady state. I want to know how many milliseconds I have to turn it off. And after that, how many milliseconds I have to turn it back on. So people are dealing with this on off transient behavior, just like your cell smartphone. You watch video, you listen to audio, you, you're browsing on the web, you do different things. Nothing is static right now. As we have all these different uh, use cases, as we have all these different, uh, uh, some things are on, some things are off, you start having problems in terms of what are you trying to do with your heat? How do you get rid of it? Uh, what's the, what are you trying to measure across this? And how does this impact reliability and, and other issues long term? How do you manage all those different pieces and make sure that uh, you understand all the different components, what it's going to impact, and how it's effect, going to affect all these different uh, possible parameters? One thing is, um, in, in this assembly, no, traditionally, we're just dealing with uh, um, conduction, heat conduction, maybe with some convection outside. But like in the chip designs, in, in this chip design previously, because of the inside chip is so, so complicated and the granularity is so tiny, so the, the tool cannot solve every um, little feature there and go to the environment. But now we have to, that's why we, we have to include the environment. So we have the, we, as you know, we have the computational fluid dynamics, that subject and the tool there that they can analyze airflow. Then, so we, a tool has to combine the conduction parts in the solids and all of this convection or radiation from the environment, which is airflow. They have to combine them together. Up to, up to this today, those uh, two out there uh, doing electronic cooling, they can solve all the airflow inside, but inside every detail of the package, there got to be simplification. The, no tool can resolve a single transistor fin fat into the very details all the way up to say, a flow um, features around the data center. So there must be simplification um, to combine or connect there's different regime of a uh, uh, simulation or analysis. Because you have functions broken up across a lot of different uh, chips here and different packages, the, the thermal uh, gradient varies quite a bit. That produces noise. How do you account for all of that? Um, I would say if the, the electrical behavior affected by thermal, say resistance, there must be some physical parameter. Resistance, capacitance, or inductance, so we, we can we can come come up with a um, uh, estimation or an analyze analysis of those uh, changing of those parameters due to temperature. Like we in from the thermal point of view, we have to include the uh, dual heating uh, into a thermal analysis because I square R, you know, current square times resistance will introduce additional heat source. So. Um, then they will affect temperature. Temperature will affect back to the resistance. For thermal noise, then we have to find out the origin of those noise. It must be uh, related to certain physical parameter we know. Then we have to analyze that parameter, how the relationships between those parameters with temperature. Then we can create a uh, iteration or analytical loop to analyze the effect. And the impact of this isn't always obvious, right? Because you have things like DRAM, which are potentially affected by heat. And it's not typically something that you would think about as you're building your package going, oh, this may affect my, how this memory functions and how fast the performance and, and the reliability of, of this is, is going. That's true. So, so we have to have this electrical thermal co-simulation. That's what we're looking at. Um, thermal alone, like traditional, you have a theta J, J, B, J, C, that just predict temperature. Then electrical and thermal co-simulation would be the one um, main topic, I would say critical topic, not just thermal, not just electric noise you mentioned. Um, there are other factors like signal integrity, power integrity, maybe there are 
in some scenarios, they will be closely related to um, temperature or thermal behaviors. Um, so, like for instance, uh, if we have a uh, uh, Innovus or Virtuoso other tools which are doing their analysis previously not take full consideration of thermal or temperature information, then nowadays all those tools want to uh, incorporate a thermal analysis into their tool to solve the problems. So given the fact that this is an incredibly complicated problem, and now you're looking at things not just on one chip, but possibly between multiple chips here and how they, the heat can possibly flow and what sort of impact it can have, is this part of the design flow? Are there tools now to say this all works together and will they be able to keep up with this in the future? We're working on that, of course. Um, we want to, basically for heat problem, it's just heat in and heat out and how the heat transfers or in between. So heat in coming from the chips or any heat, heat generation devices in die means basically in the, in the chips. So the tool analyze the chips has to be able to report the power consumption accurately, uh, static power or transient power. Then a tool can collect all those heat in information to do all those thermal, inf thermal analysis and the feedback, the temperature information back to each design tool for the chips, such that there's a, a in, interaction between electrical and thermal can be taken into account for the, the chip design tools, which is really extremely needed right now. So uh, that's what we are working toward. CT Cal, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you. Thank you very much.